Hey Blitz family, it's your girl Bella. Welcome back to my channel. So I am back in Charlotte, North Carolina, back in my apartment, back with my normal background. And honestly, it's nice to be back with this background. Like, I've missed my bookshelves, okay? I've missed looking at them. They're so beautiful. Like, ugh, can we just take a moment? Can we take a moment for the shelves, please? So today's video is going to be my best books of 2022. I'm honestly so excited to film this because I feel like I have so many videos where I talk about books I didn't like, disappointing books, just, just kind of talk about books I don't like. And I'm excited because today I'm going to be talking about books that I absolutely loved. And some of these books, I don't even know if I've ever talked about or I just haven't really talked about them enough and they deserve all of the praise. So I have 10 books. These are all five stars except for one. One is a four star but it still made the list because it's like a four and a half. Like I don't know why it's not a five because I think about it all the time but I just can't get myself to give it a five. These are my best 10 and they are in order from least to greatest. So we're going to start off with number 10 and end off with number one. So let's go ahead and get started. So in number 10, we have The Glass Castle. This is actually a memoir. I don't remember the author's name, but this book is about a woman who grows up with her two siblings and her parents, and they pretty much grow up poor her entire life. They've had times where they've been homeless, where they've lived out of the car, where they've moved all around the country. And despite all of it, like her family was always like very loving and she always like loved her family and everything. And it's just, the book is kind of weird because looking at it from like the outside in, you can tell that she's in an actual like neglectful situation because for example, her mom has a whole teaching degree, but she won't work. She refuses to work because she's like, oh my gosh, I need freedom. I need, my health is more important. So they'll go like hungry for days and her mom could be making money, but she doesn't. And the few times she does make money, her dad takes it because he has like a uh, alcohol addiction. So it's like, you can tell there's neglect going on, but despite, the neglect like she's still in like a very loving situation it's so hard to explain her parents are really supportive they're really loving and it's it's really really hard to explain it's such a good memoir it's, it's the best memoir I read last year and I know there's a movie for it so I definitely want to check that out but it's just like really heartfelt there's times when you when I was reading it where I was like angry there were times when I was like really joyful so it just pulled out all the emotions and I just really really enjoyed that book also I forgot to tell y'all but isn't my coffee like so gorgeous? Like, look at the foam. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, I'm cute as Sorry, but okay. Coming in at number nine is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. So this is the only book on this list that's a four star. And then I, I don't know why I can't give my, I cannot give this book a five. Like, it's a five star book, but I don't know why I have it. Maybe after this video, I'll give it a five. I don't know. But this book... I freaking love so much like this book is a enemies to lovers one bed trope vacation some fake dating like all the tropes all the tropes are in this book so this book follows our main character Olive and some guy who I don't remember his name but they both have siblings that are getting married at the beginning of the book and they end up coming down with like some food poisoning so all of sisters like you know what y'all just go on our honeymoon for us because it's all it's an all paid honeymoon they had actually won it i think it's in hawaii and she's like y'all need to go like just pretend that you're us but their enemies they're like oh my gosh we're gonna be together for like a week and we hate each other so they end up going on this honeymoon together and it's just so amazing like this book's a five star i'm about to change it right now just talking about it but it's just so amazing like they end up sharing a bed their enemies end up like their enemies and they're forced together so there's like that forced proximity they start to realize that they like each other they're in like awkward situations where it's like they have to share a bed they're getting a couple's massage together like all types of things like that that are like steamy but not like smutty like it's steamy but not smutty because for me smut there's levels to smut and I'm not like a someone who actually like loves smut but I do like steam and it was steamy and I just love everything about this like there's nothing I disliked so let me go ahead and go on Goodreads and give it five stars because I need to stop playing around with this book I need to stop playing around with this book that's what it is the next book is Ties That Tether by Janie Caro. This is a book that originally I gave it five stars and then after reading some reviews, I gave it four stars. But I had to realize like, if I think a book is five stars, it can stay five stars. And I read this book like at the beginning of last year. So I was just getting into like reviewing books and like figuring out like how to give like a well-rounded review. So I was a little bit more impressionable. But looking back, like I freaking love this book. So this book is this book got some oil on it. Dang, my fingers is greasy. But this book is about a Nigerian-American 
woman who she has a really strict mom her mom like wants her to marry a nigerian her mom is just like typical of a barbarian african woman so that's our main character's like family dynamic and also she made this like promise to her father on his deathbed that i think that she would marry a nigerian i don't remember what it was something like that so she feels a lot of pressure to like marry a nigerian but mind you when she made this promise she was like 13 years old anyway so the book starts off with her having a one night stand with this like spanish daddy with this spanish poppy and she ends up getting pregnant so if you don't like pregnancy in books or like unexpected pregnancies that does occur in this book so it's just about their romance and like them trying to be the together despite the fact that her mom is overbearing and she made this promise to her dad so it is like i wouldn't call it insta love i mean she does get pregnant like right away but it was just so good like there's smut in this book but the smut isn't overbearing like this is the first book i read that had like smut like on scene you know and i still enjoyed it because it wasn't like too much and i just i just freaking love this book i adore it and as a nigerian woman i just love reading books by nigerian authors i love i just love it like i just feel seen and this is like probably the first like nigerian like fiction book that i ever read and i just love it so much like, i could talk about this book all day long the thing in this book that some people complained about is that there's like a lot of movie references because she's like such a romantic so there's lots of movie references to like romance movies but i'm someone who did not grow up watching a lot of movies like i am not a movie head i don't know a lot of movies so i didn't mind that if anything i was like jotting them down like ooh. Let me check out when Harry Met Sally. I haven't seen that. So I didn't mind the movie references, but if that bothers you, like I will say that's in here. But I think this book was so good. And I loved it. I literally read this in one day. I stayed up till 5 a.m. to finish this book. Like amazing. Oh, I have the next book. I love when I own the book. If you make booktube videos, you already know like when you own a book, it makes editing so much easier because you can just hold it up rather than inserting it. But the next book, oh my, don't come for me. Verity by Colleen Hoover. Whoa, whoa, I'm about to get, I'm about to lose so much respect for having this in my top 10, y'all. Please, please, please. This book is a banger. I don't care what nobody says to me. Like this book is a banger. This is the best thing Colleen Hoover could have ever done for her career is right Verity. So I'm sure most of y'all already know what this book is about. And if you, if you don't, this book is about our main character. I think her name is L Lowen. Is that her name? Colleen Hoover be having the most random word generator names. Like, I think her name is Lowen. I don't remember. But she is a author and she is contacted by someone to help finish this famous author named Verity series of books because Verity gets in this like car crash and she can like she's like pretty much brain dead and so they want someone to finish off her series for her and like match her writing style so she ends up like going to Verity's house and like going through her manuscripts trying to figure out how to like finish this series so it seems like Verity wrote it and as she's going through her manuscript she finds Verity's like personal manuscript about her life and she uncovers all these sick details about Verity. This book is not a romance it's much more of like a suspense thriller with I guess some romantic elements. I mean love is made there's love making but I wouldn't call it romantic but oh my gosh this book was just so good like this book is dramatic as heck this book is over the top i read this book during a 24-hour reading challenge so i did read it in one day it's a book that i was really nervous to read because all the colin hoover books i'd read previously i gave like three stars and below like i didn't really like and everyone in my book club had read this book and gave it five stars so i was like "Ooh, i hope i'm not the outlier but no i'm sorry if you don't like verity i'm sorry i loved her this book is so good in my opinion so this is next <laughs> Y'all, I just got a whiff of myself. I smell so good. I think I'm wearing Brit Britney Spears Fantasy. I don't know what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. I smell good. Like, I sprayed this Fuzzy Teddy yesterday with perfume. Because, yes, I'm repeating outfits. And I still smell good. Like, Jesus. My dad buy me some good perfume. Okay. The next book is Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead, which is the second book in the Finley Donovan series. I've talked about this book a few times, I believe. Maybe not. But I'll talk about the first book because this is the second book, so I don't want to, like, 
spoil it. And the first book I gave four stars, but this one I gave five, which is why it's in my top five. This book is about a woman named Finley who is like a struggling single mom. She has two kids. She's a writer. She writes like thrillers and murder mystery type books. And one day she's sitting at a Panera Bread with her agent discussing the plot of her newest book. And someone overhears her and thinks she's a hit woman. So they slide her her number and like give her like the name of like her husband and like a cash amount. I think it's like $50,000 to like pretty much kill him successfully, clean, whatever. That's what this book is about. And it's a cozy mystery. So it's like, there's antics, it's fun. It's definitely mysterious. Like you don't really know what's going on, but it's cozy. So it's fun, it's a vibe. And this book is the second book in the series. And I just loved it so much. Like I just had such a good time reading it. And when I finished it, I was like, wow, what a banger. So that is the next one. The next book, Wahala by Nikki May. Like I said before, I'm Nigerian. So I'm always gonna have a bias towards Nigerian authors, but this book, Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't think I've ever really talked about this book. This book, how do I describe it? This book takes place in London. It's about three Nigerian friends. They're all biracial Nigerian dads, white moms. They live in London or somewhere in the UK and they're all best friends. They're all in their 30s. They're in different places of life. It's about their relationship and a fourth girl who comes in who's another like biracial Nigerian who comes in and sort of starts like planting seeds and pretty much like destroying their friend group. And I enjoyed this book because like I just thought that it was really good. Like I made my mom read this book too and she really enjoyed it. And I know it's the thing that some people dislike about this book is that there is like colorism, but my mom was really born and raised in Nigeria. And she said that the book is actually very accurate in terms of like some of the things that go on with like people who are like higher class versus people who are like lower class and things like that. The colorism didn't bother me because I think that like colorism is a real thing and so I think that books need to have a representation sometimes. There's one character in this book who's like super colorist, really truly hates herself and she's like annoying to read her POV. She has the most interesting POV but she's just also so annoying and she just kind of like destroys everything for herself and I just wish that her ending would have been different. But this book was so good. Ronke got done so dirty in this book like I literally cried. I literally cried like I love this freaking book. I'm only upset because there's multiple covers of this book and there's this one cover that's like a cartoony super cute cover and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. It's in a paperback and I'm gonna get it because it's so cute and I might just have two copies of this book but I don't care because this book is amazing so yeah. The next book is Atomic Habits. Wow, a nonfiction made my top 10. Actually that's not surprising because Glass Castle is nonfiction. This is a self-development book. <laughs> And I just got into self-development last year in 2022. And this book right here, this book is a banger. Like this book is pretty much about like the habits that we have, habit formation, how we are pretty much a culmination of all of our habits and just why we have certain habits and everything. It's a book about habits. It's a book about atomic habits. Sorry, one second. And it was just really good. I listened to this book on audio and then I bought a physical copy because I wanna like go through it again and actually like highlight and underline some things because I took like extensive notes like I took extensive notes on this book but I look you want the notes to be like in the book but maybe not I'm like I don't know if I want to like write in my books or not like part of me doesn't care I remember I was talking to my friend Kyla and we were talking about how I know she was saying how like she doesn't like writing in her books because when she gives them out she doesn't she doesn't want people to like have like kind of like preconceived notions you know what I mean like that would be someone could read a book that you give them and they don't know what you thought about it until like after you discuss it which I think is also a good idea so I don't know if I want to write in my books or not but this book is so good if you're not into self-development I totally understand but whether you're into it or not I think this book is really powerful because it's not telling you like what you should or shouldn't do it's just telling you why you have the habits that you have and how to create new habits if you want new habits and I just thought this book was amazing and I'm gonna reread it probably sometime this year the next book is Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid oh my gosh this is a historical fiction sports book about a tennis player named Carrie Soto and she like is a famous tennis player and she has like the most singles or something tennis related like that where she has a title she's been retired for maybe like five years and a new star is on the block and she is coming for her title so it's about her getting back into tennis and fighting for her fighting to like keep her title from this new tennis player who was like pretty much on the verge of taking her title and I thought it was so good like I know some people complain that it's too tennis heavy personally I've never played tennis I did grow up playing sports and I think tennis is cool I didn't like grow up playing it though or watching it and I still understood what was going on I feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid does like really good research because she writes like pretty much all historical fictions and I feel like she does good research to the point that 
like if you don't know about tennis she explains it enough that I believe you should be able to understand it because that's how I felt and like I said I don't have a tennis background and I just enjoyed the the book it's about tennis it's about sports it's about rival rivalry but it's also about like relationships relationship that she has with her father her father's also her like tennis coach and I just love this book I thought it was really heartfelt and I love the ending because I love I've I'm someone who grew up reading like pretty much only romance so I'm always used to like a happy ending but I've started to like branch out of romance especially this past year so it's like I'm reading books now that don't always have a happy ending. It's good because it's more realistic you know. This book didn't have a happy or a sad ending but I think it had the correct ending like I think the book ended in the best way possible where it was realistic but it was still it was still triumphant whatever that means. <laughs> Coming in at number two, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Is that his name? Michaelides. <sighs> I freaking love this book. Oh my gosh. Like, okay. So I just started getting into thrillers at like the very, very end of 2021. Oh my gosh. Okay. This book is about a famous painter. Uh, what's her name? Alicia. It's about a famous painter named Alicia who one day she goes home and she shoots her husband in the face seven times and then she never speaks a word ever again. She's in court. She doesn't talk in court. She doesn't talk like ever and people are like oh my gosh she has like no remorse. But then some people are like well she doesn't she's not talking. Perhaps she has like a mental like like she's mentally ill. Am I using the right word? So they decided to send her to like a rehab pretty much instead of prison. And we're following this psychoanalyst who is trying to figure out why she won't talk and he's trying to get her to talk. And at this point it's probably been like seven or 10 years since she's ever spoken a word. A word? <laughs> since she's ever spoken a word. And so like people are like, you're not gonna get her to talk. Like we cannot get her to talk. He's like, no, I can get her to talk. Many, many, many spoilers. This is gonna take like two seconds, but it has the unreliable narrator trope, which I had never read until I read this book. And that is like the best trope I, is it called a trope i don't know but it's there's an unreliable narrator pretty much and i've never read that before and it was so good like it was so good when it got to the plot twist y'all i just sat there in my bed because i got to the plot twist and i didn't know what to do like i was like <gasps> and then it sat there for 10 minutes like oh my gosh like what just happened i thought this book was so good so good so good okay number two and the very best book i read in 2022 which i recommend to anybody on god's green earth but most especially to black women but really anybody but most especially black women it's the coldest winter ever by sister soldier oh my gosh so one of my friends Alyssa, who's in my book club with me she recommended this book and this is like a urban classic like this is a classic and it's urban and it's my first urban book i ever read so this book is about our main character winter she is like 17 years old and she grows up in the hood but she's like she's not someone who's in the hood and she's poor her dad is like the biggest drug dealer in the hood so she has like nice clothes hair always done nails always done like she's popular she's rich honestly she's spoiled she has a family where like both her parents are together she has like a great life and one day her dad gets taken down because he's a super big drug dealer so they've been keeping tabs on him you know how they do where you might be a criminal and you're selling drugs and you do like little little stuff and they don't get you but they're just building up a case so they've been the police have been good the police have been building up a case on him and once they had enough dirt to like really give him like some hard time they take him down and so it's about like her transitioning from a life where she is number one she's at the top to pretty much not being at the top anymore and there's just so many like so many gems dropped in this book like I actually can go through my notes on Instagram because I have a couple screenshots of some things that are said in this book that I just thought were so powerful. Y'all I just I really just respect this book so much. I will say this book is this this is a hood book like let me read you the first sentence. Because at first I was reading this book I was like I don't know if I can read this because the book is ghetto but it needs to be. Okay. The first like paragraph is like in italics, which I don't really know how to explain what that means. But the first like real sentence is Brooklyn born. I don't have no soft stories for you about rats and roaches and pissy pew hallways. I came busting out of my mama's big coochie on January 28, 1977 during one of the during one of New York's worst snowstorms. She came busting out of her mama's big coochie on January 28. That's my new oldest book hood. But this book is just I think it's just so powerful. Let me give you all the quotes that I was talking about because they're so good. Okay, so here's one part of part that really liked it says drugs is a government game but law a way to rob us of our best black men our army everyone who plays the game loses then they get you right back where we started in slavery then they get to say this time you did it to yourself i won't play that game there's another part in the back where she has like a q a because this is like i said an urban classic so it's like one of the first of it one of the first of its kind you know what i mean so this is 
part of her Q&A when people were, um, she was talking about her goals of the book and one of them says to put the black family back together. And in that part, she says at the end, because when families united around negative leadership and a wrong plan, they don't end up together, they end up separate. Like, I don't know, there are just parts of this book that I just really enjoyed. Like, oh, for me, it was a little hard to get through at the beginning just because it's not something I'm used to reading. It was like a different, a very different writing style. Like Winter is yelling at you the whole time and she's really ghetto and she'll really piss you off while you're reading it. But this book is just really, really important and I just have so much respect for this book and I want everybody on earth to read this book especially every black woman like when my daughter hits 14 my future daughter I'm gonna be like here read it please uh, just a banger like freaking adored it so much respect for that book so those are my top 10 books of 2022 let me know in the comment section if you've read any of these books did you like them did you dislike them are these unexpected i feel like i'm very very happy with my top 10 because they're a good mix of genres and i just really really love all those books like they all did something for me and they're all books that like i think about a lot even after i've read them some of them i read a whole year ago you know because it's the beginning of january now and i just have so much love and respect for those books let me know down below what are some of your favorite books of 2022? I cannot wait to see what 2023 has in store and I'll talk to you all in my next video. Bye.